So hello and welcome back to another video. Tonight we are looking at workhorse and doing a quick stock analysis. Now I'm not going to lie to you guys, I was not actually going to make an episode tonight, but the other day I got a commenter which actually gave me the entire script for this video, gave me loads of great reasons about workhorse, so thank you to you if you were watching. Honestly, I can't remember this person's name, but even though I was not in the mood to make a video, I actually came out with one for you, and that is the reason why you should subscribe. We're trying to get to 1,000 subscribers. Can you be one of the people to press that subscribe button? whilst you're at it do press that like button because that's also down there leave me a comment telling me what you think workhorse will do in the next few months and share this video with your friends and colleagues we're trying to get to a thousand subscribers anyone who you can share the message with it would be greatly appreciated let's jump straight in with this one on this powerpoint you can see we've got a very cool slideshow for you tonight we're going to be looking at a few factors right now a few factors in the future and then helping you to come to a conclusion should you buy this stock obviously i'm no stock analyst or financial advisor the purpose of this video is to just look at great things about the company and why the stock may go up in the future. Also, like I said, I did take inspiration from a subscriber, so bear that one in mind. The facts may not be 100%. I checked all of those which I could, but obviously living in the United Kingdom, some things don't actually make sense to me. Sorry for that stupidly long intro. I just needed to explain a lot of things before we started off. So, starting us off with the actual video topic, the current stock price. So, the stock has actually risen a lot recently. Now, obviously, with stocks like Tesla and whatnot, people get, then go and short the stock. But as we have also seen with Tesla, we've seen it go to highs. People saying it's going to go down. We've seen it go to even higher highs. So, it's not necessarily always a bad thing when a stock goes to such highs. Now, yes we got to think about the realistic factors. So, so with things like Tesla, in my opinion, it was inflated value because the company hadn't really come out with anything revolutionary at that time for the stock to shoot up. The stock just shot up, whereas in this case, we do actually have a lot of catalysts going on. Of course, we did have the um, stock split with Tesla, but here we actually have some great things for the future. So with Tesla, once the stock split was done, it was done. With this one, we've got a USPS contract, loads of other contracts coming out, which could potentially signal great things for the company. I'm going to be talking about all the contracts, so please do watch all the way through to the end. So we do actually need to look at the overall market in my opinion and the space of this company. So yes we need to look at the stock price and then compare this to a space which the company is intending to fit into. So at the minute there is not really too many companies especially in America which are looking to produce electric quote-unquote last mile delivery vehicles if you will. And what does this mean? It means that workhorse have actually got quite a big space so obviously if nobody else is producing it what is the only option? The only option is Workhorse. Now, I'm not saying that there are no other producers, but Workhorse is one of the biggest in this market sector because a lot of people are focusing on big electric trucks and not necessarily smaller vans and last-minute delivery vehicles. So, yeah, I think this one's going to fit into the market, and that is a reason why we could see the stock price continue to grow into the future. So, just quickly glossing over to the next point. Why Workhorse trucks are actually sufficient and the significantly better option to pick? They're modern in the sense that they are electrically powered, so obviously low emissions and things like that. They're also secure, as you would expect, especially this is in regards to the USPS contract. They use vans from like the 80s, I think it is, and of course they're not going to be the most secure and up-to-date ever. So they're more efficient as well because they use electricity. Parts are cheaper to replace because you have less moving parts. You've just got one motor or a few motors sometimes rather than, you know, I don't know, 10 cylinders, 8 cylinders, 6 cylinders and a car and loads of other things to replace with petrol. So this is a great thing and it also makes it more efficient whilst reducing the amount of emissions emitted. Something else to look to is the USPS contract and how this plays into this one. We're going to talk about this a little bit in the later part of the video, but USPS are looking for something exactly along these lines. I'm not going to talk about that too much now. This is going to be quite a long video as it is. Benefits of the truck. Now, obviously, the workhorse truck does have its own benefits over the other trucks. It's easy for drivers to learn on because, you know, it's similar to an electric car. You've got your pedals, you've got your accelerator and brakes, especially in America. I don't believe a lot of people actually use manuals anyway, so it doesn't really require anyone to learn too much about it if you know how to drive a standard car or truck and it also helps to protect to, to protect the environment sorry about that so we can understand what this means you know zero emissions great stuff for the environment and people are going to be happy to see that so moving on to our next slide what does what does fun what does fundamentally investing in workhorses bring? Sorry about that. I clearly have issues reading. So yes, what happens when we fundamentally invest in workhorse? Looking at what the company actually does and what are we funding by going into stock? So Workhorse and Lordstown Motors, if you don't know, Workhorse owns a 11% stake in that company, I believe it is, it might even be a 10% stake. They bring cleaner vehicles to the streets. 
What does this mean? Well, it means that we have better countries as they don't emit as many emissions. Great things for the economy, great things for all kinds of stuff, because it shows that we are committed to changing the world by reducing our emissions, which is, of course, a good thing. Cleaner streets and less global pollution and global warming. Great things to see from companies like Workhorse. So that's one of the great things, and that's the fundamentals of the company. They are going for last mile delivery vehicles. This is a drone and at the minute the vans as well. I'm going to talk about some future things which they might have coming, but that's what we're looking at at the minute. Electrical solutions to otherwise dirty, if you will, um, emissions emitting, diesel emitting, smoke emitting, whatnot, uh, other solutions. So that's what sets workhorse apart. So why are workhorse trucks going to be a good option for USPS to pick? So of course we can't guarantee this is going to happen, but if USPS were looking to pick a truck company, which they are, one of three at the minute, we're going to look at why workhorse could potentially be the superior option for them to go for. It's an American company, which is a good thing for America. I mean, they are looking for an American company anyway. It's a fully American company. Good thing for the American economy, of course, because you're getting jobs from America. You're not outsourcing and whatnot. Great things in general for a company and an economy. So if USPS go for this one, they will be helping the American economy rather than another country's. They're also the only option in their three lineup of potential vehicles that have a full EV. Now, this is going to be a good thing for the future, because if you think about it right now, so if, if the workhorse trucks right now, uh, sorry, if the USPS trucks right now are like 30, 40 years old, let's think about this one. In 30 or 40 years, are we still going to be using petrol or diesel trucks? No, we're probably not, to be honest. So what does this mean? It means that if they go for this EV option right now, by investing a little bit more, they will have future-proof trucks because they don't have to be ruled out with lowering emissions and whatnot and regulations to cut out petrol and diesel. Great things if they go for this option, in my personal opinion. So, they have the correct safety standards to operate in all 50 states. This is something which I actually took from my subscriber. I didn't actually know this because we're in the United Kingdom and that's not technically relevant to us. I know that in the United States, you actually have a lot more tight regulations in the sense that all states operate differently. and It's not necessarily the most unanimous approach. And what this means is with Workhorse having this connection in all 50 states, you can sell it to all states, not a problem, no modifications needed. And if there are modifications needed, they already have passed them. So great things to see there because it means that you can sell to all states not a problem and of course the usps will actually be opening and operating in all states so that is an important thing to consider workhorse complement great software for their ev so this is obviously going to be about software support whatnot similar to tesla i mean not really but you know you can look more into the workhorse version of this if you want they have good software which is always a good thing for an electric vehicle company so looking at what the USPS um, company would do, they would ultimately save more money and also cause less environmental harm. So it's a win-win if they do go for this option. These are just my personal opinions on why they should do it. We're going we're to talk about this one more in a future video, whether they will or will not get the USPS contract, in my opinion. But that's just some reasons why I think it would be a good truck for the contract. So just looking at a little bit more on the USPS contract, I think we've talked about this a little bit so far in previous videos. The new truck contract for the company is basically allowing them to make trucks for USPS. This contract is valued between six and eight billion dollars. I think there are three companies in the running for it. One of the others is Ford, obviously a big company there. I can't actually remember what the other one was, but you can easily, very easily find that one out if you wanted to. So getting us on some more interesting stuff because we've touched on all this before, Workhorse and their production numbers. So Workhorse actually own a 10% stake in Lordstown Motors. Like I said, it might actually be 11, so don't please correct me on that one. I know it's either 10 or 11. And Lordstown are set to go public. What does this mean? It means that companies will be able to, or investors will be able to invest in Lordstown. And of course, what will happen there is because obviously Workhorse own a 10% stake, they will get 10% of the company's value. So, you know, that's more funding for the company. They are generally spending more money in general, well, I said general twice, on producing on production related circumstances so of course that's going to allow them to produce their trucks a lot faster a lot more efficiently great things to see for a company investing in growth because this company is probably going to grow quite quickly in the next few years with the electric revolution so there is still apparently more news to come on the company's decisions and i will keep you up to date on all that so please do subscribe and like the video because this is a place to stay updated on all your favorite stocks Moving on to our next slide then, production numbers. Lordstown and Workhorse could easily team up as they actually own a stake in Lordstown, like I just said. What will happen then is they could potentially use the old GM General Motors factory to produce. What does this mean? It gives them a lot more production room. 
So you could be looking to produce up to 600,000 vehicles a year, which is more than enough for Lordstown and Workhorse to produce all their vehicles at the minute. This would allow them to scale up quite a lot faster because they already have an established factory which could pump out quite a lot of trucks and a lot of cars for Lordstown. And obviously Lordstown profits will actually account for 10% of Workhorse profits as well. So that would work hand in hand for great signs. So speaking of great signs, let's move on to some good signs about the company Workhorse taking on 200 plus additional staff which is generally a great sign especially in times like now i think it was companies like ford actually which is another company in the running for the usps contract they are actually taking away staff from their workforce and then we got workhorse who are trying to add staff this shows good things because it shows that they expect the company to grow even further in the next few weeks years and months and that is obviously going to be a great thing for the company Further growth means higher, higher stock prices and it also means more company market cap great things to see there so efficiency and production workhorse have teamed up with hitachi now if you don't know what this is it's hitachi capital and also hitachi vehicles i believe it was and this is going to help the company to run better so it helps them to incorporate the high operating standards of hitachi in workhorse which means which means that they'll be able to produce, to produce more efficient vehicles and produce vehicles more efficiently under hitachi and with hitachi's help great thing to see such a contract like this coming into fruition right now because workhorse is going to be growing quite quickly in my opinion and they could really do with something like this Moving on to our very next slide then, we have the earnings for the company. The company is looking to reduce, that is supposed to say, production costs. And this is a good thing because it means higher profit margins and whatnot. They are also looking at getting their vehicles into the hybrid incentive program in California. This means that companies will be incentivized to buy electric trucks like Workhorse. And this is good for potential buyers. And this may not necessarily account to quite a lot of earnings, but it is still a stable stream of income nevertheless for the company drones now of course we do know about the drone we've got great things potentially for the drone now this is another piece which i stole directly from that subscriber that commented honestly i wish that you, one or more of you guys could just comment with the video ideas for me i would appreciate it massively no that's a joke but we're going to look at this one here so we can see as we know workhorse are working on a drone now this is for less mile delivery similarly to the truck but this one's actually better in a way because it's also more cheap and also more efficient great things to see there for any company who is looking to go into this one and another benefit for this vehicle is actually they apparently have a patented drone technology for van delivery so basically the drone will take off from the van and this basically means that any company who wishes to incorporate this into their company will have to go through workhorse for a license so we can imagine what this one means if companies like amazon and whatnot want to go into this for their delivery off the van they will have to go through workhorse now i don't actually have a source of information for that but you can you can check it out and tell me if it's 100 percent legit i believe this is something which is going to happen so we'll just have to see customers so we're obviously looking at the usps contract but actually workhorse is in talks with many companies and of course a lot of companies are actually looking to get into electric vehicles and there aren't too many brands if you will or companies in workhorse's market space at the minute which means that workhorse could potentially pick up some new clients and some great contracts for long-term periods which could allow them to grow the company significantly over the next few years and this is why it could be something to watch for a long-term investor who is looking to hold brand development so of course we know all about workhorse and what they're trying to do with their electric trucks and also obviously with the drone they're actually looking at other things which i believe are things like vacuum cleaners actually laundry and delivery of food so it's very interesting to see workhorse a company like that expand into these market shares but similarly to tesla how tesla went into cars now we're looking at things like batteries and whatnot and they're just expanding the company we can see how this one can grow a company quite quickly and quite massively because once you establish one corner of the company you are basically away and we can see great things just look at amazon for example amazon are expanding all over the place and workhorse could potentially be like that in the vehicle sector depending on which direction they go they are looking to expand the brand but we'll just have to see what goes on with that so i hope you enjoyed this video i think we have reached the last slide we have i hope you enjoyed please do leave a like and subscribe please share this with any of your friends and also check out any of the videos which will be on your screen right now i will see you in the next episode which will be out later tomorrow hope you enjoyed see you then and thank you very much for your time